Amen. Yeah, I, I just been looking up to the Lord for some some direction uh, to give to you, and I trust that the Lord will would help uh, and and just give us some help. Um, I've been asking the Lord for some a path. What is the path for twenty twenty three? Um, what's 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 on your mind? What's your direction for us? Yeah. We don't just want to do things. We want to do it and know what is in the mind of God. Um, year in, year out, we do this. Um, the old year passes away and the new one comes in. And there are some rituals that come with it. There's some expectation that come with a new year. We're excited. We claim the promises of God, which is a good thing. We need to claim the promises of God and believe the word of God. And I'm like, Lord, what's the path? What, what, what's, how do you want us to approach this year? We started some series of meetings before I left Elorin for Lagos to go to Cameroon. And I started sharing some of this body and turning it around. It was just forming in my spirit. Um, and, and, you know, I, I want to again try and just, just help us because it's important for us to, um, Romans chapter 13, it says, knowing the time. It's important for us to know the time. Uh, the sons of Issachar were people who understood the times. And so they could tell what Israel ought to do. Uh, there's need for us to have understanding of what the will of the Lord is. It says, don't be unwise. Don't walk like foolish people, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And I've been just asking the Lord, Lord, I don't want this to be just another year. I don't want to go into this year like I have done in the past. I have witnessed so many of this and we've done so many things. We come up with new year resolutions. We come up with new year plans. Sometimes we are very strategic in our thinking, but I'm asking the Lord, well, what is the way forward? What's, what's, what's on your mind? Because the Bible says we should be established in the present truth. It said, let him that has ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So it is a present continuous thing. He is saying something and I'm struggling. I am I'm waiting in the place of prayer, listening to God. I said, Lord Jesus, let me, let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what you're thinking. What are you thinking about us? What should be our attitude? going forward and and you know something the odds are high this this, this is midnight brethren this is this is midnight you know Romans 30 says the night is far spent it's it's, it's a prolonged night the night is far spent it's it's midnight it's dark it said the earth will be covered with darkness and gross darkness the people but then he said something he said, we will arise because his light will shine upon us. And, and this even made me a bit more careful, a bit more, um, a, a bit, I've slowed down a little bit and tried to just weigh my spirit and listen to God because I know that the situation is bleak and there is nothing in the horizon to show that it's going to get better. But God has promised. He said, when darkness is covering the earth, he said, we will arise and shine. The glory of the Lord will arise upon my own people and we will arise and we will shine. And, and so that has made me to want to just hold on a little bit and say, Lord, what, what's the path? The challenges, we just prayed about the election year. Not just that it's an election year. The entire situation in the country is 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 an ominous one. Um, it, it probably hasn't been this dark in this country as it is today. So whoever even wins the election, whoever takes over the election, has an ominous task. He has a, a Herculean task. Whoever wins that election to get this country back on track, everything that we know is just 
downward trend. The economy is on a downward trend. Everything has changed. The country is witnessing situations and things that we haven't witnessed before. Inflation is hitting the rooftop. Interest rates have gone up. Exchange rates, like you know, people can't buy food. Security is a challenge. Everything that we know is a challenge. But the Lord is saying that there is a path and that he's going to turn things around in 2023. That's why, for me, this is very critical. This is just not another year. I, 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 I want a disposition. I need to hear from God what is coming. And, and let me tell you something. Globally, it's, it's, the situation is not, it's not good either. The picture on the horizon, the Bible says at the end of time, it's going to be dark. It said nations will rise against nation, pestilences and all kinds of things will come. So you look at it, the big economics of the world today are in trouble. The scenario going forward is not an exactly good one, brethren. If you look at the, 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 the Russian-Ukraine war, the potentials of that becoming another third world war, the major economies of the world are struggling. There is so much, so much division in the place. And, and you look at it, nobody seems to have the answer. Nobody knows going forward what is going to happen. How are we going to deal with this? And the Lord is saying to me, this is midnight. And this midnight is going to get darker. But God is going to, he said, a certain cry was made at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And the vain virgins that have slumbered and have slept did what? Woke up from their slumber. God is speaking to us and, and we need to hear him. It may be slightly different from what we're used to hearing. One of the biggest problems we're going to have is that we have a, a prototype. We have our mind fixed. There's a, there's, a, there's a mindset that we have. And we expect God to walk in that mindset. But what God is doing in this hour, what he's saying to me, is, is, is like nothing we have, we're used to. And we have to be open in our mind. We have to come to God and humble ourselves like we've never done before. We have to go into 2023 abandoning everything to God. We have to go to God. We have to come to, as we approach this 2023, we need to dedicate our lives. We need to lay on the altar our intellect, our ability, our strength, because what is coming is not what we can deal with by ourselves. We, we do not, the best and the finest of us cannot deal with what is coming. So we need God to step into the situation. We need God to take control. We need to, we need to come to a point where we humble ourselves. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, and turn from their wicked way. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. He said, so to yourselves in righteousness, the Bible says, break your fallow ground and the Lord will come down and do what? And rain righteousness upon us. So, so let's pick this from our own perspective. You know, sometimes you talk and you talk outside yourself. You talk about out there the people in the system, the government, the people out there. But you know, God, God is talking to us now. And God is saying to me that we need to reposition. We need to seek him like never before. The, the, the excitement is okay, brethren. We need the excitement, but we need more than the excitement. I have been excited like this many times before, but I discovered that there's something that I need to key into. There's a key I need to get, which is, which, is, which is beyond the excitement. I need to see the way God is seeing. I need, to, I need to allow God to help me to connect with him 
in, in, a, in a very different way. And, and that's the burden, brethren, that I have, that as we, as we enter into this year, God is calling us to, to, to step aside a little bit. He's calling us to, to go the path of meekness. He's calling us to brokenness. He's calling us to seek him with all our heart and with all our mind. And if we do that, he will strengthen us. It says, the word says, it says, they that wait upon the Lord. And the Lord is saying to me, this is the time for us to do what? To wait. Because we don't know what's ahead of us, friends. What is ahead of us is humongous. It's, it's a tough situation. But it says, they that wait. So it's not about just jumping out there. It's not about activity now. It's okay to have some activity. It's okay to do this and to do that. But beyond the activity, we need some ministry from the Lord. The, 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 the horsemen, the footmen are here, but the horsemen are coming. How are we going to contend with the days and the months and the years ahead? I've just told you, it's not just about Nigeria. It's, it's a global thing. It's, it's a darkness is upon the earth and gross darkness, the people. But God is going to visit his people. He said, in that day, I, the Lord, I shall return. And when I return, I will rebuild the broken tabernacle of David. And the residual of man will seek man. There is a path for 2023. And, and that path is not a popular path. I could come here today, brothers and sisters, and excite you. I could tell you about the big promises, and we need to talk to ourselves about the big promises of God, but that's fine. But, but there's a key that we must find. There is a path that we must walk in, because that is the path that will give us results. Because the, what is ahead of us is tough. What's ahead of this country is tough. But the Lord will be our strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? They shall renew their strength. And God is talking to me about waiting. Let's slow down a little bit, friends. Uh, come down from your high places. Whatever you think about yourself, whatever you think you have achieved, whoever you think you are, it won't matter now, friends. We need to, we need to come down. We need to, he said, he said, in returning and in rest shall we be saved. There is a returning that you have to do. We need to return. We need to seek the face of the Lord. We need to, he said, he said, he said, my people should, Joel chapter two, he said, you should return and seek me with all your heart. Seek me with tears. Seek me with fasting. Seek me with mourning. He said, because the Lord is gracious and plentiful in mercy, he will return to us. He will restore the years that are wasted, the year that the caterpillar and the palmer worm had eaten. Friends, we, we need to connect with this God. We need to seek him. And, and this is a personal message. And, and I, if you take this word and, and reposition yourself, our attitude needs to change. Our commitment going into this year needs to change. And, and it is in the humbling ourselves, in the humbling of ourselves, that will bring the change. He that is of a broken heart. You see, the Lord is near unto him that is what? Of a broken heart. And it is he that has a contract that the Lord will reach out to. In this end time. So, so we need some, some, some level of humbling of ourselves. Then the Lord will pick us up, right? And then he will give us strength. There's a, there's a strength that is going to come to us as we wait on him. There is a renewal that will come to us as we wait upon him. Some of us have been on the run. We've been on the move. But there comes a time in a man's life when he needs to separate himself unto God. He needs to be alone unto God. He needs to be in the quiet place. 
You know what he said? He said, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. So you, where is your strength going to come from? In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And that's what we don't have, brethren. Somebody needs to get back in, friends. Somebody needs to come down. Somebody needs to wait. Somebody needs to return. Somebody needs to, to get into the secret place of the Most High. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Somebody needs to wake up. He said, the night is far spent. Therefore, let us wake up from our sleep. And that's the message. Because it, it couldn't be darker than it is now. I can sit here and give you an analysis of the situation in Nigeria and globally. I don't want to bore you with that. But I need to let you know that this is midnight. The night is far spent. And we, the people of God, we are the hope of this world. We need to wake up from our slumber. We need to cast away the works of darkness. And we need to put on the armor of light. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. We're sounding the trumpet. There's an alarm that is going on. The Bible says that the virgins went out to see the bridegroom. But because the bridegroom tarried, they slumbered. And they did what? They slept. And that's what is happening to us in the church. We're sleeping in many ways. I don't want us to go into 2023 sleeping. Because you see, if you are well positioned and I am well positioned, there'll be fire in the place. We need some fire back in here. We need, we need the Lord to, 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 to restore the years that have been wasted. The axe head, we have lost it. The cutting edge is not there. The activity is there. We have the activity, we have everything in place, but the cutting edge is no longer there. And God is moving by the power of the Spirit to restore that cutting edge. God is bringing that cutting edge. And it will take us to seek him in a place of brokenness. Each one of us must come to him and seek him. He said, behold, thy king cometh. Zechariah chapter 9. Let us read that. Behold, thy king cometh. He said, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh. Hallelujah. Unto thee, he is coming. The Lord is returning. He said, the Lord whom you wait for shall do what? Shall come suddenly into his temple. But, but there is a path. There is a way that we can connect with him. He said, behold, thy king comets. Rejoice, O daughter of John. Let's look up for our salvation is drawing near. The Lord God is coming. But how is he coming? The Bible says he is coming with salvation in his hand. He is just, he's bringing deliverance. So God is, there is a visitation that is coming. I have no doubt in my mind that there is a visitation that is imminent. He said, the Lord, the glory of the Lord will come back. That glory that has departed, that glory will come back. He says, arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord is upon thee. So the Lord is bringing forth his glory back into the church. The Lord whom you wait for shall come suddenly into the temple. But when he comes into the temple, he will sit like a refiner's fire. And what is he going to do? He will refine the people. So, so the visitation is coming. The deliverance for our land is coming. But the people of God must submit themselves. The people of God must trim their lamps. They must wake up. The people of God must position themselves properly. And it's not God. It's not even the situation that is the problem now. However bad the situation, God can fix. The real problem is us. Because God needs a tool. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand until I make the enemies I first to. He said, a rod shall come forth out of Zion. And that rod is the people of God. The creations are groaning as we speak, waiting 
for the manifestation of the sons of God. That rod shall come forth. And you are that rod, brethren. And I'm concerned about this rod. How are we going to manifest God's glory? How are we going to allow him and put ourselves in a position that he can lay his hands on us? The God of Elijah is there. It is the Elijahs of God that are not present. And God is looking for men and women. And that's, that's my biggest burden as we go into this year, that God raise your people. God touch us like you have never touched us before. We have been like Ephraim. Ephraim, a cake that is not turned. Break us, O oh Lord. Let our fallow grounds be broken. Humble us, O oh God. Take away all the unfruitful works of darkness from among us. Visit us like you have never done before. And, and let everything that does not give glory to your God depart. Let darkness pass away. And let the light of God begin to shine among us. He says the path of a righteous man is like a bright shining light. And that light shines brighter day by day until the perfect day. And so I want us to just take some time and, and, and just wait on him. Take some time and introspect. Take some time and, and, and come to seek him. As we go into this year, your plans, leave it in the hands of God. Make sure you are connected properly because God wants to use you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to fill you completely. But if we are not broken, he will not be able to fill us. He will not be able to do the work in us because the hope of the nation is us. He said, we are the light of the world, isn't it? We are the salt of the earth. But you don't light a candle and put it under the bushel. You don't do that. When you light a light, you put it on the lintel so that the whole world will see. But if a, if a salt has lost its savor of what use it is. So God, God is speaking to his people. He said, your king is coming. He is meek and he is what? Lowly. That is his path. He is riding on what? On a donkey. Have you ever seen a king ride on a donkey? Donkey is not a sign of royalty. Donkey is, 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 is what you use. You just use it and dump it. In the north, I mean, I grew up in parts of the north. They have jackie, that's donkey. The jackie carries the load, all the heavy load. It, it can carry loads that cars can't carry. They just wrap the thing around it. But you see, it's instructive that your king is coming riding on a donkey. Not even a donkey, but a fowl, a, a, a baby donkey. It, it, it makes it even more, I mean, it, it reduces it. Yes. But, but that is the path of our king. He said he is meek and he is lowly. The Bible says a meek and a quiet spirit is of great prize in the sight of the Lord. And I'm saying, God, bring back the spirit to the church. Bring humility back to this house. Bring brokenness. Take away pride from us. There is unforgiveness. There is bitterness. There is strife. The Bible says where there is strife, there is every evil work. And the Bible says lay aside every walk of darkness. So that the glory of God can come. He said the Lord will sit. He is sitting right now. And he's going to refine his own people. Are you willing for that walk? It's not going to be easy. Because now you have to deal with your ego. You know we all have our space. We have our personality. We call it. But that has to be broken. It's not you. It's Jesus. He wants you to conform to his image. He said, whoever you yield your members to, you become a servant of that thing. God is visiting his house again. God is coming back into this temple. When he came back into the temple, he saw that there, was, there were money changing. They were buying and selling those in the temple. And that's what is happening in our hearts. You may not be physically selling those, but what's happening in your heart? And what did Jesus do? He took whip 
and drove them out. He said, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. God is speaking to us and I want us to just yield to him and ask him to touch our lives. God has been faithful. He's taking us through 2022, but he's asking us to step up. Step up in your commitment. Forget about what the Lord will do for you. He will do more than you can even expect. But what you need to do now is where am I standing? Where in relation with this God, where am I standing? Do I have a, do I have a broken heart? Do I have a meek and a quiet spirit? In quietness and in confidence shall your strength be restored. As we seek the face of the Lord, in the place of prayer. For they that wait upon the Lord, they shall do what? They will renew their strength. We need our strength to be renewed. We need, uh, the whole situation is wearing us out. So going into 2023 needs a renewal of strength. And I'm asking God, renew my strength. Help me. I don't want to go in my own strength. My own strength cannot match with what is out there. And he says, you need to wait. They that wait upon the Lord. The place of waiting is the place of sorting out. When you wait, God sorts you out. Some of us are too much on the move. We can't hear God. Too much on the move, God cannot sort us out. But God needs a people who will wait. The heat will burn them, but they will wait. They will not run away. He himself is not in a hurry. He said, when I come this time, because I want a thorough job, I want to raise a people that will manifest my glory because the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. He says, I will take my time. I will sit like a refiner's fire and I will sit like a fuller soap and I will wash my people and sort my people out. God is doing a deep work of sorting, brethren. He's speaking to us. He's Talking to you, the lethargy, the carelessness, the things that we have brought in. You know, we have, we have cast away the things that are crucial. We have majored on the things that are minor. And God is asking us to come back and, and to, to return to that old mark, landmark and to seek him with all our heart. And seek him with tears, seek him with mourning. Seek him with all our heart. Joel chapter 2. Let me read that for you. He said, turn ye unto me. John chapter 2 verse 12 to 14. He said, turn ye unto me. With what? With all your hearts. And this is the problem. Not some of your heart. You know, some of us uh, have our lives compartmentalized. In Jesus, you can have this one, but this one... You, I, I want to keep it. We have, our, we have our idols. We have our ways. But he says, you will do what? You will seek me with all your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. And you will seek me with what? With fasting. What fasting does to you? Fasting doesn't change God as such. Fasting changes you. When you are fasting, your frivolity is reduced. You tend to be keener when you are fasting. You tend, when you take less food, you tend to be sharper. Even your mind and your eyes are sharper. You tend to want to pick on time because the flesh is subdued. This flesh needs to be subdued. He said, we must decrease so that what? He can increase. He said, we should seek him with all our heart, brethren. We need to seek him with all our hearts. We need to turn to him. And that's the personal thing that each one of us will do. Turn to him. As we start this year, let's make a definite consecration. Let it be a year of consecration. And it will surprise you what the Lord will do. The Lord will anoint you. The Lord will give you grace. The fire of the almighty God will come upon you and burn away all the chaff. You reorder your priority. Say, so when you seek me with all your hearts and with all your mind, you will do what? You will find me. And that's what we need to do now as we seek him, as we make him number one. God will sort out this nation. The things that are eluding you, 
you will see what God will do. If you make God first in your life, make him priority, God will make you priority.